Oh. Nope. There it is. Roll 20. Or not roll 20. Mm -hmm. Streamlabs running behind. Um, oh, and K disappeared. <laughs> now I, we know we can still... here. I had to turn on the fan. Listen, that is mood. It is incredibly warm in here. And actually, I can Ow. zip mine. Seeing. I also have a sweatshirt, but... I am also in a fleece sweatshirt. It's fine. The things we do for, for branding... Right there, maybe yeah. on camera. No, I have a sweatshirt, but my sweatshirt is also my shirt, so I'm gonna <laughs> change it. No, so. yeah, don't don't do that, especially not on, yeah. on stream. <laughs> not right when you turn live. Yeah. All right. Well, hi everyone. It's been a while since we've played a vampire game, and we have two brand new people here to suffer with us. Um, so we also are down to Ark because Ark is being a big boy, big man, got a job. Shouldn't belittle him for his successes. So congratulations to Ark Survivor uh, for having a new job, and it shouldn't affect his ability to play in any of our games, which is great. So we can no longer call him a sweet face Babu. We can't call him a sweet face Babu. He is grown up. He has job. Um, but yeah. So hello, Diesel Shot. Thank you for the host. Um, but uh, why oh. don't we do? some quick introductions and we will start per the order of the uh overlay here which means we'll start with reese or chris and we'll go down to cadence and hello everybody uh i am reese regan i am playing a 11 no sorry 13th generation tremere uh and it will be fun other than that, you can catch me uh, here as well on Thursdays for Scum and Villainy. Yeah. Down to Cadence. Hello, I am Cadence. I am going to be playing a thir yeah, 13th generation Malkavian. <laughs> yes. Have lots of fun. You can find me <coughs> at Magdalene Bloom on the Twitter and the Defiant at, goodness sakes, is it Encounter? Yep, Encounter Roleplay yeah. is where you are. <laughs> it's been a week already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're not kidding there. Yep. Uh, we will shoot <laughs> over to Kay. Kay, also known as Casey or KCL.cause on Instagram. Um, I do cosplay. All that fun stuff. Normally I'd be in cosplay right now, but um, I was confused, so here I am. Um, <laughs> I'm playing a 12th generation... Uh, hello? Oh, hello? Sorry. Something popped up. or Something did weird. pop up. Know. What was that? Oh. Um, <laughs> but I'm playing a 12th, gen blah, 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 12th generation gangrel known oh, as Viper. Um... Yeah, that's all we're saying, and that's it. I have a pet named Roger, which you might see him every once in a while right there. Mm -hmm. He's we're a ferret. We're happy to see him. We are very happy to see him. Where is he? Oh. I thought you said you can see him now. I was like, I can't. Mm -hmm. No, nah, it's a bit he's sleeping in that. I think yeah. he's sleeping in that thing right there. That's what it was, Kay. The music bot decided to call it quits. Oh, fun. Strange. I'm going to shift it to the other one. Let's see if that helps. Nope. Okay. So uh, just prepare yourselves for phantom music bots kicking in uh, at some point because I don't know what happens when it does that on roll 20. It's just like, this one's not going to work. This one is going to work. This one's not going to work. <laughs> um, so uh, I apologize because I will shut that down as quickly as I can when it comes back up, but there is no rhyme or reason to when it decides to stop or go or whatever. Let's jump over to Kay. I am. Okay. I just did. <laughs> che, the other A. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I am Shay. I'm a member of Party White Gaming. I also have my own stream, uh, which is twitch.tv slash Shay. Chum, S H A E G E M. There it is. <laughs> Hello, goodbye. Uh, uh, and tonight I am <coughs> joining in. in this game as Kalista, uh, Kalista Teramos, a thin blood, 15th generation. Uh, normally we would have uh, Ark here as well, uh, but their Nosferatu is out and busy with their own 
uh, dealings, but hello, I am... Hello? <laughs> Everyone's joining us. That's the, that's Fazbot. Alright, let's kill that. Nope, that's the wrong button. Stop. There we go. Alright. <laughs> it's the first episode. There's always technical difficulties. It's fantastic. Yep. Alright. So, um, I will just remind everybody uh, in the audience, or if you're watching the VODs or YouTube later, that uh, we are playing Vampire the Masquerade, a mature tabletop roleplay RPG. It will include scenes of the graphic nature that have things such as sex, violence, drugs, and possibly gore. If any of these things make you uncomfortable at any time, Make sure your own mental health and well-being is first and foremost. You can step away from the scene and come back at a later time. And also remember that we are playing bad people who are in fact monsters. It is okay to hate the characters, but do not take it out on the players or me, the GM, because I will always be playing the worst of the worst. Um, <laughs> all of that sounds lewd. Thank you, chat. Um, so, with that being said, um, we have some details that we were going to go over, but Ark is not here, so now we can't really uh, work it all out as a whole. But we have some stuff we can work out and go over uh, for just the four of you. Um, you all decided that you were a uh, Vahmi Coterie, which means your job is to protect the masquerade here in the city of Phoenix. What this means for you all is I need to know where your base of operations is located within the city of Phoenix. Um, and basically, I have the understanding that you all have separate havens. Is that correct? So far, Sounds I would fine. assume so. Yeah. Okay. Where I do don't know if everybody has a separate haven, but I know at least most of us do. Yeah, I was under the uh, the impression that Olivia also has their own haven. Um, is anybody I was currently... actually gonna? Oh, I was gonna say I was actually gonna message Arg about that because we had discussed possibly having our havens be connected. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, then I might just say, "Hey, do we want to both just share a haven?" But that's for a later date. Yeah, no, I, and I mean here. that's that's a important detail to note. Um, so potentially uh, linked or shared havens for Viper and Olivia. Okay. Um, I know Lucian has their own, yes. Oh, yes. Antonio does. Callista, what's uh, going on for your haven situation? Is there, and I don't know Phoenix quite as well as you do, is there like, um, uh, is there a, where is it? Um, a theater, a big theater somewhere? There are tons of theaters, and the best answer I can give you, um, perfectly honestly, is we are playing in a World of Darkness game, which is a mirror of our own world. So if you want it to be there, we can make it, because we are not going to be using a majority of real-world locations. Okay. Uh, landmarks are one thing, but if you want a club, we can put it in downtown Phoenix, if you like, or anywhere you want. Okay. So I probably have my haven in a, in a theater um, because I have a, uh, I have a herd. Okay. Great. Probably close to the, the rest of the coterie, though. Mm -hmm. All right. So everybody seems to be situated in the proximity of the Phoenix area around uh, a county township called Scottsdale. Scottsdale is known for being where the wealthy elite of the city um, all tend to congregate. There's an abundance of golf courses, country clubs, fine dining, um, and especially with a lot of the industrial, military, and other um, factory-based stuff being uh, situated across the 202, uh, the highway that cuts around in a wide circle of most of the city proper. Um, most of the work is delegated to, delegated to places like Mesa and Gilbert. Um, where we find ourselves on this first night is in downtown Phoenix itself. Um, it is Halloween night at the start of Dia de los Muertos, 
which would have been much more fun and important if Ark had been here. But nonetheless, you all are out uh, celebrating Halloween and the first day of the Day of the Dead uh, because it is a day that you all can be out uh, with relative ease and little concern for breaching the masquerade, just being yourselves. You don't have to go through as many efforts. And so we find ourselves uh, first bringing the camera in over the club that our dear Callista has claimed to be her haven. Tell us what the name of this club is and what sort of scene is it? Um, well, I wasn't... Orpheum. Orpheum? And what kind of club is it like? What, uh, what what music do people listen to? What does the crowd look like? What kind of energy exists in Orpheum? Probably... Probably a Sing Queen kind of energy. relatively decent variety of music but a lot of it tends to be uh, more current music uh, a little bit of Music is really a, is is a genre, is it? No, there is club music. It would be like, is it more of a high tempo poppy? Is it EDM? Is it just dance? Probably high tempo. Okay. So, Orpheum, it's roughly nine o'clock. The sun has gone down uh, in this. Uh, late fall, early winter, uh, you all have had time to gather yourselves and start meeting up at Orpheum where uh, you were told that you were going to be meeting with uh, two new Coterie members, uh, Callista being the first as a Thin Blood initiate, oh. as well as uh, Antonio becoming your newest new addition. Um, you all were given uh, hand-delivered messages written out because, like many things within the Camarilla, technology has been largely disavowed with the fall of Shreknet, uh, a information system put together by the Nosferatu that was breached by the Second Inquisition and used to largely expunge and uh, destroy a number of Camarilla and vampire-controlled cities. So oops. most things, yeah, big oops. Um, most things now are done via letter or um, low tech means, uh, as the Camarilla found that it is the best way to protect oneself if it can't be traced digitally. Technology is moving too fast for long lived individuals to keep up with, surprisingly. Um, since this is. Callista's Haven, why not describe Callista for us first? What does she look like? What is she doing if anybody is approaching her on this dance floor? Um, she's a dancer by trade, so she's probably uh, she's probably working the floor. Um, Pale Skin has a, has a brand on her back that she keeps hidden as best she can. Um, uh, side of her head is is shaved and I apologize I had my hair kind of done up and it's like super frizzy now because I had the fan on it and it's so hot um uh has uh sharp blue eyes and a slight flush to her um like like she has a con constant blush of life active If you have Blush of Life active, I will need a Rouse check, please. Uh, I actually have Life Life. And please, for people who aren't yes. uninitiated, what um, does it Life It is like? a Thin Blood Merit. Um, 
which allows me to have Blush of Life, or the effects of Blush of Life, constantly active. Excellent. So I, the only way to tell if I am, if I am uh, undead of any nature is uh, by a very thorough advanced search. Because my heart does beat, albeit slowly, but... All right. Who would like to even... Oh, go ahead. Um... It, are... Are thin bloods, like, common knowledge? Mm-hmm. Okay, just double-checking. <laughs> Uh, well, since you jumped in, why don't we describe what Viper looks like when he arrives here at Orpheum? Alrighty, well, Viper is a pale dude, black hair, um, black sweatshirt, probably some gray sweatpants today, um, Converse, you know, very unassuming, except he has, like, eyes that are, like, just all yellow. They're piercing, like, it looks like he's wearing sclera contact lenses, which is what he usually tells people if they ask. Um, but usually he's he's not out with the people. Um, this is one of those nights where obviously he can be. Um, and he also has a um, face mask on. Um, and that's, that's really him. He's, he's not much except for those eyes. And whatever's under the mask, but we're not going to talk about that. Mm -hmm. And how about Lucian? What does Lucian look like? What are they up to in this club? Uh, Lucian is average height, sort of s slender guy. Mostly dark hair, but likes to throw in the collar, you know, make it look cool. Just dresses, whatever. Sometimes carries his toys with him. <laughs> you know, as you do. But always has a notebook of some kind. His hand, pocket, something. Always. Alright. And lastly, Outside of the club, Orpheum, a car pulls up, and inside of the car is Antonio, freshly arrived. Antonio, you had time to get comfortable in the city. Mostly that meant you were brought before the prince, where uh, introductions were made, but being a busy man, uh, Luther Graves, the prince of Phoenix, only had enough time to get your name and know that you belong to the the Chantry. With that, he really didn't need much more information and quickly dismissed you. Uh, the Seneschal took down some details and then you were sent on your way. After being assigned a shadow, um, you were told that the shadow was going to be helping you get acclimated to your new unlife. The shadow is an older gentleman, um, older as in a few generations ahead of yours. Um, they did not give you details of their clan, but given their nature, it's fair to assume that they might have been one of the few La Sombra that had survived uh, joining the Camarilla. Um, they introduce themselves as simply Maxwell. They have a, a nice dark chocolate skin complexion and hair done back in braids that form into a ponytail, uh, much like Lucio. I, I had found a very fun picture before <laughs> Lucio shirt, um, but the the same kind of uh, kind of look. It's very thin uh, braided dreads that go back into a ponytail, mm -hmm. and then a few strands that hang off the sides like elongated sideburns um they are kept sharply dressed as uh many um the sombra are the dark mirror 
to Ventru, and they also like to keep a stylish look to them. Um, but uh, this gentleman is your shadow, and you arrive in their vehicle, and uh, the two of you exit and stand outside of the club. Maxwell, gentlemanly as he is, holds the door open so that you can get out and finally says, well, this is where the rest of them are. We'll make I... introductions and then head inside, or figure out what to do with you from here. Uh, so I will exit the vehicle and kind of like nod in thanks. Um, Antonio feels basically naked, having none of his armor and weapons as normal. Um, but he's dressed in like goth tactical gear. Um, so it is as uh, practical as he can get away with. There is probably some uh, Evlar in there somewhere. There's probably a hidden weapon or two, so we'll see if the door people can actually uh, find them. <laughs> um, but this is this is as dressed down as he gets. Um, so very, very tactical black um, cargo pants, boots. Uh, black, uh, like, Under Armour looking shirt that comes up to the neck. Um, kind of brown hair that's, like, parted to the side. Uh, and a, a scarf. He notes the scarf and he says, you understand that at night it can still be well over 100 degrees here. I mean... You don't actually get to a hundred degrees. Important lesson for you. You are still expected to appear human. Even if you won't feel the heat. These children always make uh, aesthetics over logical sense anyway. It is... But is it, uh, you suffer for your beauty? <laughs> he smiles at that. And he says, Well, it is as they say, your funeral. Come, let's... He kind of, like, smiles at that. <laughs> let's go inside. The others will be waiting. If you all didn't see it in the Discord, that is what Maxwell, your shadow. Oh, I like the eyes. Oh, yes. The eyes are really cool. It's a good looking person. Now, <laughs> now I feel like chat will be upset with me if I don't show it. So, chat, oh. folks who, are, who have the privilege <laughs> of watching, that is Maxwell, their shadow. It gives me Kravitz vibes. <laughs> There were a few Kravitz pictures that I chose not to pick <laughs> because it would have been too on the nose. Oh, no, uh, he's hot. Oh, no, he's hot. Fun fact, all the Sombra are hot. How dare you? Um, but yes, uh, so with that, and um, Antonio, the two of you enter the club uh, where you find that people have taken to celebrating, uh, as it were, um, this club seems to be catering more towards the Day of the Dead um, than Halloween itself, but there are a few people who are mixed mingling uh, the occasional Frankenstein's monster, a sexy nurse, at least four Harley Quinns, uh, a rather distasteful looking uh, Count Dracula uh, who's, who comes up and offers to bite your neck if you really wanted. Also, helicopter. Sorry, we'll wait for that to pass. It's just my air security. I don't, I don't know why a helicopter always seems to fly through at 9.30 at night, but it's without fail. To be fair, it's also fairly common in Phoenix because there is a, an army an base. Uh, well, no, an army base. Uh, it's the Inquisition. They know you're doing uh, vampire stuff at this time, so yeah, they check yeah, up they, on you. They, they just doing that flyby. Um, but uh, most of the participants here at this club uh, got the memo 
that this was a Day of the Dead celebration. So most people are dressed in more traditional, albeit comfortable, uh, wear for this uh, 90 degree October, early November night. Um, the heat of the outside is coupled with the heat of the bodies intermingling. Uh, you can feel the, the lifeblood of these humans giving off on each of them as they dance, grind, bump elbows, drink, do all of the sort of things that humans do when they're going through their uh, mingling and mating rituals. Several of them are painted up in the festive skeleton motifs, and again, there are a couple who are dressed more for Halloween, who might have just been walker-ons. Kalista's probably got some of that skeleton paint for Day of the Dead. Yes, that was going to be an important question. Did anybody else dress up uh, for this? I know Antonio is goffed out, but is anybody, uh, with the extra information, is anybody halloween or Day of the dead it up? Um, I would probably change real fast. He probably has on, instead of a sweatshirt, just to fit in more, um, a, just like a black t-shirt. Um, and then if someone were to look really closely at each of his joints, you know how there are like... Like ball jointed dolls, how they blush up heavily each of the joints. Mm -hmm. It's like that, but all, they, instead of having like a pinkish tint, it's almost like a green tint. Um, so like if someone looked really close, it would look like he probably put some effort to be something. But it's hard to tell whether or not like... To, to a kindred, it's hard to tell whether or not it's a costume or his actual, you know, skin tone. Yeah, it's mostly like finger joints, um, and then like elbows have that tint. The, uh, the face and body paint on Kalista's probably glow in the dark, so it keeps changing with the change of the lights. Oh, somebody got the police called on him. All right. I just got here, and the police are already breaking up the party. Yep. Um, <laughs> Antonio, you will notice that uh, Maxwell does stick out here. Um, he is dressed in a nice suit, and he did not bother to put on any sort of face paint. But as the two of you enter, um, you see that there is a bouncer who is... Oh, so, time out, time out, because I'm so not going to let that one go. I turn around and look at him, and I'm like... Now who's the one sticking out? I... If I'm questioned about my appearance, I will just tell them that I own this club. <laughs> he just kind of shakes his head and goes in. And the two of you uh, make your way <clears> through <throat> the door. The car, I guess. But uh, one of the things that you notice as you're walking uh, past a bouncer who's scanning people's ID cards with like a little LED light, there is the briefest of flickers from his flashlight as you and Maxwell pass by. And the man kind of like frowns, smacks the flashlight and is like, I just changed these batteries. And uh, you enter in and it's not long before you track down the other members of the Coterie. Um, Lucian and... I uh, keep wanting to say Ark's character and they're not here. Lucian and, and Viper are easy to find. Uh, Maxwell also sticks out like a sore thumb, so you just kind of gravitate uh, towards his presence. And it doesn't take long for Callista to see that the rest of them have met you dance away from your herd, who seem to all be wanting to have time to dance with you? Um, I imagine, I imagine my sire told me that I was meeting someone, so, uh, yeah, I probably do start to, um, dance away and slip away from them. Once you've all gathered, um, you find yourselves in a secluded booth. It belongs to this club. 
Um, one of the waitresses who knows Callista comes by with drinks. Uh, they've already been picked out. It's just some cheap beers, and you don't see Maxwell reach for one, but he kind of looks at all of you, expecting you to keep up the ruse, as it were. He says, please, make one. yourselves comfortable. I do take one. Viper, um, sort of like how Lucian had said, um, he usually has, it's usually just like a tiny little, like, just pocket notepad type things. Um, and he's just, he's looking down, not paying attention to anyone and just flipping through it. He doesn't acknowledge the drink or the waitress or anything. He, he does glance up at Maxwell and the other guy. I want to thank you uh, all. Oh, go ahead. Antonio, like, letting out a breath and, like, you know, takes one of the beers and, like, slumps down in, in one of the seats like, like a petulant child, like, so does not want to be here. Um, Get another for, glance. For anybody who is not a thin blood, if you do want to imbibe in the alcohol for at least a temporary moment. You will need to blush of life. It will allow you to keep it down long enough to play off the ruse before you would have to uh, expel it later. I'm not actually going to drink to to make that clear. I'm just grabbing a beer to make it, you know. Exactly. Hey, absolutely. I'm just, I'm just making sure that it's noted for everybody. If you mm -hmm. do imbibe in it, you will need to blush of life so that you can keep it down. Um, once everybody has at least a beer in hand, looking like they are enjoying themselves at the bar, uh, or at this table, um, he says, I want to thank you all for coming tonight. As you know, you are a newly formed coterie, so it is important that you all have a little bonding exercise to make sure that you know that you can work well together and trust in one another. Your coterie has a very important task of upholding the masquerade. This makes this level of maintenance means that the rest of us can continue to do what we need to do in order to keep this city under control. Failure to uphold the masquerade puts every kindred at risk. And he speaks plainly about your dealings uh, in this club because between the music and the dance scene, it's very unlikely that anybody could hear or listen in. So there's no real worry of being able to speak plainly um, for you all either, given that your authority figure is doing so. Before I begin briefing you further, is there any questions you all have for me? Piper is going to drop something down on his notebook and then rip it off and slide it on over to him. You know, take the little piece of paper, fold it up. What does it say? It says, what will this bonding exercise entail? Question mark. She just kind of folds it over. I'll get to that. And then I'll jot down again and say, okay, thank you. And put it on over. Anyone else? I don't have a question, more of a comment. None of us should trust any other one of us. It's one of the few things that I've actually learned about. He starts to say you, and then he says, he, he like almost spits like our species. <laughs> I don't even trust myself, so you guys have a tough road to hoe. Fair point. Ernest Viper would told me I'd be oh, working wait. with you. You won't have any. Viper problems, would um, Viper would clear his throat and say, "We have a weird form of trust here." I will explain something to all of you. Don't treat this as if I am lecturing you or 
talking to you all like your children, but I should emphasize an important thing that Antonio said. He is not wrong. Within kindred society, you should not trust another kindred as far as you with your strength being as enhanced as it is as far as you can throw them. However, there is a clear distinction between other kindred and your coterie. Your coterie are the allies you can trust and rely on. They are the only other kindred you should ever give a moniker of trust towards. That is not to say that one of them will not stray and perhaps put a stake in your heart, but it should not happen. You all are united under a single cause, and as long as you stay focused in that cause, you should have no reason to wish to harm one another, and you should always be ready to defend another of your coterie. You will have no trouble from me, sir. You will need to speak up. You will have no trouble from me, sir. Thank you. I don't expect trouble. I just wanted to make sure you all understood that if nothing else, the others across from this table are your allies. And I would like to make sure that you understand that there are more forms of power that your kind don't take into account. Be careful that you don't snuck up on, as it were. What do you mean? The old ones really like to flex their muscles and say how strong they are, but they don't take into account things like technology. The humans destroyed the Chantry in Vienna. Did they not? They did. Your clan got sloppy. There were a lot of very old vampires in there, weren't there? Yes. However, the Tremere's failings was a learning experience for the other Camarilla. Who has a cell phone here? May I see it? I will take out my cell phone and pass it over. Your cell phone, <laughs> She's your, like, nope. Your cell phone lights up as you touch it, and you start to hand it over to him. When it comes into Maxwell's hand, it starts to flicker, and then the screen gets distorted. And then he merely snaps it in half. Technology is a weakness. The Tremere failed because the Nosferatu relied on technology and they failed to adapt and see what was in front of them. Camarilla has been working to consolidate their power to better defend and adapt. And as Antonio states, the Second Inquisition is always a danger. Technology is a danger. It is why you must remain vigilant to maintain the tenets of the masquerade. When we get complacent, um. we die. Raper would rip off another sheet of paper and place it in the center of the table. And it says, he keeps saying, quote, your kind, and then it's pointing towards Antonio. <laughs> Maxwell, There's an arrow written Maxwell, pointing towards it. Maxwell grins very wide, knowing exactly why Antonio says your kind in quotes. And he looks to Antonio and says, as a show of trust for your new coterie, would you like to tell them? <clears throat> tell them about? 
your history. Where you come from. Why you feel the way you do about your current predicament. Oh, I am a soldier. I was uh, one of the people that raided that chantry in Vienna. Antonio is former Second Inquisition. I was betrayed by the Inquisition themselves and turned into this thing. I had to escape. Would I know what the SI is? Uh, would you like to make a roll to see if you know? I would, and I'm trying to figure out what it would be etiquette with. Uh, why don't we say that it is? Why am I on Lucian's? I want. I would probably say intelligence, because you're not thinking yeah, on your feet. Knowledge. It's more of like a book knowledge. Um, yeah, let's do intelligence. Either academics or etiquette will work. Etiquette is really more courtly stuff, so maybe intelligence academics. Academics. Um, real fast after that, he would drop good. something else down. And it would say, I understand telling us oh. is an act of trust, but I cannot quote trust him until he proves it and then puts it in the center of the table um yes Callista, you would have a basic knowledge of what the second inquisition is um it is a reformation of the old spanish inquisition that was used to hunt witches and vampires and all of those stories but modernized they are very much vampire hunters um that's the basic information you can get with what you rolled. They're um, paladins with guns. They are paladins with guns. They can be they can be anywhere from basic uh, low level uh, militia vigilantes to high grade uh, government funded hunters. Um, it would seem Antonio is implying that he was one of those high grade hunters. Used to kill. And we're supposed we to are. trust him. He is not. I wouldn't human. trust me if I were you. He's, I don't trust any of you either, so. He is not human anymore. He gains nothing by betraying you to the Second Inquisition. They'll <laughs> kill him for the service. I'm here for a reason. I have nowhere else to go, unfortunately. The enemy of my enemy is always my friend. If I would put another sheet that says what happens when you find a place. What happens when you find what? A place to go. He has I mean there's only place one place for our kind, really. He has found a place. Phoenix. Our beloved prince welcomed him with open arms, and being a member of the Chantry, he will serve the Tremere. Would um, re underline the I cannot trust until he's proven it. Indeed. Trust should not be given freely, it is meant to be earned, which is why you asked about the this bonding exercise. You have something planned already, I assume. Of course. We never come unprepared. Are you all ready to begin, or would you like to sit and talk a bit more? There is no rush. The night is young. Let's jump into this thing. Very well. Get it over with. <laughs> As they say, we'll dive in feet first. Um, Viper kind of rolls his eyes a bit. Um, Maxwell reaches into his coat and he takes out uh, a vanilla envelope and sets it down, opens it up. Antonio, you're familiar with this. This is just like a, a standard briefing, briefing. dossier. Um, mm -hmm. And on it are uh, is a Polaroid of um, a young woman 
um, blonde tight hair tied back into like a, a, a messy bun uh, with some bangs falling over glasses uh, light blue eyes dressed kind of in like a hipster fashion or it's a top and then like a little frilly wool thing um, he says it's come to our attention that despite Prince Graves' orders of no siring within city limits without permission, someone has gone and brought a new kindred into the world. This, as you know, is a breach of the gravest offenses. So is the target the sire or the child? Both. The, uh, flips a page where it has some uh, in basic information about this person, uh, who they are, what they did in life, uh, you know, basic details. Uh, and he flips the page over, and there's another Polaroid that's paper clipped on there, and you see that there is a picture of uh, a very, very um, Hollywood conventionally attractive man. Um, He's got kind of the Hispanic complexion, dark hair that's slicked back with gel in a kind of upper pompadour kind of, uh, I think Ricky, like if we were going to cast it, it would be like old 90s Ricky Martin, um, the way the hair looks and the face. Um, he's seen without a shirt, it's kind of like a silk unbuttoned white and there's a picture of him uh, talking to this young girl um, under a street light. The two have reached the masquerade by starting this relationship without the permission of the prince. And because of this, well, I will not tell you what needs to be done, but if you all are ready, I've already had them delivered to the back of Orpheum. Which one is the sire? He taps on the picture of the gentleman. Oh, that makes it worse. And what, who was the other one? Sorry? What was the other picture of? Of the childer. The childer? The The girl. Since you bought them here, I understand that we have some kind of ownership of the club. Somebody does. Well, as long as we have access, let's just go back and get this done. Yes. So you just brought them here and want us to take care of them for you? Your job is upholding the masquerade. Um, Viper would flip over a sheet of paper that says, has there been a blood hunt put out? Not necessary. They were apprehended by the sheriff and brought here for you. Does the, does the prince want anything in particular? Again, this is at your discretion. I'm here to observe and see how you as a coterie handle your job. I will neither interfere nor tell you how to do it. I can advise on certain aspects, but my role is to observe. I am your shadow. What is their plan? Whose plan? These two. They have no plan. There. They've already been apprehended. We just need to, as uh, as was said earlier, take care of them. Antonio gets it. We'll see who's the last to cross the finish line. I'm ready. <laughs> Is Lucian doing the same thing you are? <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. <laughs> um, Viper would probably speak up this time and say, "Punishment is usually final death." 
That is correct. Is it the only Prince has granted right of destruction to oh. these two? I, I'll I'll glance to Viper and ask. I'm relatively young. It is you said usually is final death the only punishment? The prince requests otherwise. Is there a circumstance you think? that it might be within the Camarilla's best interest to not exact proper punishment? I'd have to talk to them. Indeed. That'd be your job, then. Alright. And I will stand up and start taking my way to the back of the club. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll follow. Yes, let's play. I'll take up all the papers <laughs> and put them in my little... I forgot to say, he has a little messenger bag. Mm -hmm. He'd um, put all of his papers in there. Hmm. And oh. start following. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a, a mix between Maxwell and Callista leading you all into this back room. Um, but uh, the club has a little storage area um, behind a set of doors where nobody who might happen by uh, could stumble in and see what's happening. But when you get back there, um, sure enough, there is another individual dressed um, in plain street clothes that has like a, um, a werewolf mask over their head and they kind of like lift it up and show that they're not uh, not a, a kind, but it's another kindred, and Maxwell just kind of makes a distasteful I, I definitely roll my eyes at them. <laughs> yeah, just makes a distasteful glower <laughs> at this, uh, this kindred and says, you're dismissed. And the individual nods and steps away, and at the center of this room, uh, it's a concrete floor uh, with a large drainage grate near it um, the pair are uh, burlap bagged and their uh, wrists are bound behind their backs with rather strong looking handcuffs it's very clear that it's for show as uh, you're all more than strong enough to attempt uh, breaking handcuffs if you so desired um, but they know that their position is one where they shouldn't try to escape. But they are on their knees, bound and bagged. And Maxwell walks and finds a place uh, to take a seat and says, Well, here they are. You can question them and make a decision. Uh, on the dossiers, what did it say that their names were? Their names are... Oh. Do a random generator because I didn't make their names yet. Because they're gonna they're gonna die. It's fine. Um, the woman's name Ricky Martin and <laughs> Ricky Martin. Uh, no, the uh, the woman's name is Rose Grayson. Put that there in chat. Rose Grayson and the gentleman's name. Is Ricky Martin. No. <laughs> I was about to put that. I know you were. That's why his, I thought it was funny. His name is not Ricky Martin. <laughs> Martin Ricky. No. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I keep almost typing. Martin Richard. <laughs> like you say something oh. and then you're like, no. Oh, this is Martin even, Richard. This is even better. His name, Fabian. Fabian. Fabian is all that's listed. Um, quick question. Mm -hmm. Just because this is something that um, Viper would have totally done, what is a noticeable feature on that werewolf mask, dude? Um, are you looking at the mask in particular, or once they lifted it up? Once they lifted it. Just trying to take note of any features of this guy that he could uh, You would have You would have seen the briefest of features from them. Uh, their eyes would have been 
uh, the same level of reddish that most kindred have. Uh, they have a scraggly looking beard that covers fully across their mouth. Uh, it's brown, just like their long matted hair. And as I said, they're just dressed plainly in street clothes. And if, um, if someone were to go off of stereotypes, would you like to make clans. a roll to try and determine what kind of clan they are? Yeah. All right, Lucian, please give me. Not Lucian. Oh, sorry, you are not Viper. Lucian. I'm so used to you being the Malkavian. I know. Viper, Viper please give me a uh, wits etiquette roll, please. Any modifiers? Let's see if I have any etiquette. Do you have anything that might give you modifiers? Um, I mean, I guess, like... Actually, like, I was thinking... actually take, uh, take a plus one. And yeah, I, don't I was thinking, to... like, you don't need to tell me why. So... I don't need to tell you why. Just take a plus one. <laughs> oh, there you go. Uh, is that just 110? That's pretty or good. Get, uh, 110. Okay. Um, yeah, you recognize another member of Clan Gangrel. I sent you a message, by the way, Ren. Did you? I see. I did. There we go. Copy that. Do... Are you doing that right away? Oh, yeah. All right, please. Do so. Um. So uh, Antonio walks over to the uh, the sire and pulls a garrot out of his hair and just immediately garrots the sire. Yeah. Give Son. me... <sighs> give me... Um, yeah, you can still talk to the uh, other one, but he wants to do this. Um, so give me a strength melee. Uh, you will have. What is? Mm -hmm. What do you say? What What did you use? He's taking piano understand. wire out, and he's gonna cut the head off. He's oh. Right. Him. Okay. Okay. Jesus. Uh, I do have to. He's gonna get a roll, but it's gonna be pretty bad because he's not truly able to defend That's himself. That's fine. Um, so, oh jeez, I didn't give this guy stats because I didn't expect him to be strangled to death. Um, <laughs> hold on. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Let's say with a minus two penalty because he's bound and not suspecting it. Two successes. Okay, so you're <laughs> you you bring the garrote up, and I think the way this works is it's like you're still expecting this to work like it would if you went to go strangle a human. You bring the the wire up, and it bites into his neck, and it cuts deep because un unlike the movies, wire garrotes don't really strangle. It crushes, cuts into the skin. Mm -hmm. It's a really bad way for somebody to be strangled and killed. And it does all of that. But he doesn't need to breathe. And he doesn't strangle. And so while there's the initial surprise and resistance, after a while he's still moving. And mm -hmm. this is when Callista says, wait, stop. And you're still, you know, holding this wire up to him, trying to either saw his head off or hope that he... Well, I'm, I'm gonna saw his head off, and I basically look at Callista, and I'm like, "We don't know if they're useful yet or not." Look, regardless if he's useful, the prince is not going to want this one alive. This is the one that breached the masquerade. She could possibly be saved. He could not. Am I right? And I look over at uh, my my shadow buddy. <laughs> <laughs> the shadow kind of looks at you, and he he now has just a glass of wine in his hand, and he just kind of does like a. He's just like he's still watching, but he kind of like, so like he kind of nods favorably in your direction. What that means is not super clear, but it, it does seem like he's acknowledging your point. So basically, like if I'm holding the garage this way, then what I do is literally turn around backwards and lean forward, <laughs> mm -hmm. and you start to see that it starts biting deeper into his neck. You're running out of time to ask this man anything if you want to. 
Uh, I don't think he can talk right now. He does not need to breathe. Uh, is his vocal cords destroyed? Hasn't got there yet. You are running out of time. Oh, okay. Um, well, I have no time to, uh, to check the dossier, so I just, like, move forward, put a hand on his shoulder, and say, Do you have any use for the prince? For the Camarilla? <sighs> he kind of, like, taps at Antonio's hands to try and... I Get will it. free up, like, ever so slightly. And he just says... I, I wanted to make him, like, make a choking sound, but he doesn't need to breathe. And he just kind of uh, feels the slack on it, and his vocal cords are accessible now. And he just says... Ah, you... God! What the hell? Skills, abilities, what can you do? Hmm. I am... I have the most valuable. How dare you all try and give me final death? I am an artist. I roll my artist. eyes and just <laughs> cut his head off at that point. I'm so done. <laughs> another, another strength <laughs> melee, please. You got it. Four successes. Um, I don't think he can beat you at this point, so I'll just make it nice and easy. Um, you, you yank nice and hard, and there is the sound of flesh ripping, and then you just see the neck get sawed through, his head flies off, and his body goes one way, the head rolls to the other. The girl starts to scream when she hears the sound of the wet thud, and then his body quickly starts to turn to ash. Whoa. I told you, over not here. helpful. Oh. I lost sound. One sec. One sec, she lost sound. Sorry. No, it's okay. Just telling everybody we can pause here. Uh, also, oh, no, we're only at an hour. Hmm. <laughs> Feels like we've been going longer. This is great. <laughs> I love it. We get a lot done. Yeah, yeah. The moment, the moment she screams, though, Viper, not in like a way of like, ah, I don't want to hear it. It's just like, inconvenience annoyed way just puts his hands over his ears you don't know how to have fun do you god this was not about having fun this was about business you can mix business with pleasure it's true no says i mean can't. you can but in this instance it wasn't warranted it's all why don't warranted. you go next if you, if you end up killing the girl, you can play with her. He was more dangerous oh, anyway. Give me a moment with her first, please. After questions. After questions. We can go. Uh, I'm gonna look at her dossier again. Is there... What did she do in life? Um, so as you're looking this over, you see that she's a college student. She's majoring in marketing design... Um, she spent a year backpacking. Her family are, um, her father is a wealthy military contractor. Her mother is a flight stewardess. Um, she has three brothers, uh, a sister. They're all uh, varying ages around hers uh, within like a 10 year spread. So a couple are older, a couple are younger. They all don't seem to have anything substantial to their histories either. It's just little one, two sentence blurbs about them. Um, but so there so really isn't industrial much. design, what you're saying is if we get her in an Apple, she can finally make them do USB-C and ha make everyone happy? <laughs> Mark marketing design. So <laughs> not even that useful. Oh, God. Uh, um, I'm going... She's, she's in tears. Can, or at least... Can Viper hand her a sheet of paper? The um, girl? So I'll take off, no, I'll take off the um, um, canvas sack. So that uh, she can actually see. Who is... Who is okay, yeah. I was like, who is yeah. her? Oh, okay. Um... He he just handed over to her, and it just has three, 
three simple questions, which would be just his questions that he has. And it just says, why embraced, why kept secret, no sire's plan? Question marks after all of them. Okay. Uh, I give a nod, and um, I'll push the body of her sire back so she doesn't have to look at it when I take the sack off. Um, and I will, a good motivator. I will make it. Um, so uh, Antonio pulls the hood back. Uh, as you clear the body and she looks around her eyes adjusting to the sudden flood of light and you all see that she's been crying she knows exactly what happened despite the appearance of trying to not have it directly in front of her tears of blood are down her eyes and she looks frantic and she says why why would you why would you do this I didn't I didn't do anything wrong no, you didn't. Do you know what you are? Yes. Fabian said we would live forever and he would love me and I would be more powerful and not sick. So you know you're not alive anymore? No, of course not. It's like the movies, right? Yes, That's Bella, it's movie. like the movies. <laughs> <laughs> No, I I know I can't go out into the sun. It's more like more like Anne Rice, right? There's more dangers than just the sun. A I, prince owns this city. The, the prince? We live in America. The um, real fast viper would cough to try and get um, <laughs> Callista's attention. I look. He'd just shake his head and just go. <laughs> All right. What were the questions again? Why, uh, embraced? why embraced? Why kept secret? No sire's plan? Question mark. But after that, he's just like, he said, "Never mind. I don't have any questions." I why like, I I like Antonio is just in the corner, like. He he said he loved me. He said if he embraced me, I wouldn't be sick or have to die anymore. So sorry, why embrace what... I, I, I didn't write these down. I kept secret. Yeah, why no, you're secret? good. Yeah. Do you know I why kept you secret. kept secret? I, no, I didn't know it was a secret at all. I. And uh, Maxwell clears his throat and he says, She hasn't been around for very long. It's not that it was secret. It was that he was sloppy. And he taught she anything. obviously has no idea what any of this is. And clearly he did not tell her that he embraced her without her permission or anything that entails. She's ignorant, I know. Uh, the question was... is, can she do anything for us? Yeah, and the final question was... Was... I'm sorry. Does she know... No, you're good. Does she... Basically, does she know her sire's plan? But, I mean, or did she? And what was it, but... Did you know what your sire's plan was? Plan? And she just kind of looks confused. And that's enough information to answer it. Yeah. Uh, Alright, so here's the... Here's the... Here's the thing. The city is owned by Prince, by the Prince. You gotta speak up. The city is owned by a Prince. In order for someone to be able to embrace another, they have to have permission. Your sire had no permission. And if that information gets out, it can cause problems with the living. So, do you have any skills or abilities that would be of use to Prince that might spare you. Well, I'm not so bad at graphic design. It's like killing a puppy. (laughs) It could be useful for the Tremere, or not Tremere, uh, Toreador.
Should I send? It could be useful in hiding, hiding our, hiding any clan symbols or creating cover for the masquerade. She could be great at marketing the Camarilla to the humans. Yeah, who's going to teach her the ways? Who's going to guide her? Who's going to watch her and make sure she doesn't break the mask? Piper puts his hands up and steps back like, not me. He doesn't yeah, say not, not me, but like... Yeah, I call not it. it. Nose goes. That's not our job. <laughs> Everybody make me a wits awareness, please. Assume the modifier. I'm just asking. I'm a re Unless you have a reason. And of course, Sorry, yes, one. if you all want to re-roll, you are allowed to uh, spend the willpower to do so. You can re-roll up to three. Oh, wait. I didn't I'm good. I like not being aware. There it is. Yes, guess. I'm going to re-roll. Uh, uh, two. Did yours make a critical by any chance, Kay? No. No? Okay. But in total, so. mine's, I think, one, two... Four. Total four. That's just two for Lucian. So I see two. Shay, you had two. Two. One for Antonio. Okay. Um, basically, besides Antonio, um, you all see that. Um, I'm trying to think how to describe this. The way she looks seems very similar to Callista. Um, oh, to do because you got higher, um, Viper. Um, you notice that she has something similar to Blush of Life going on. She's breathing very heavily, as if in a panic. Um, the tears, while they are uh, Vitae leaking out, um, you can see that there is color in her cheeks, however faint. She doesn't appear to look like Clan Toreador. Would I recognize that seeing that? Would you like to make a wits etiquette roll with a plus one bonus? Quick, somebody give her the Morpheus. Do you really believe that's air you're breathing right now? <laughs> um, two. Viper. Two. Oh. You recognize that this is also a thin blood. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I feel like Viper would say, well, real fast. How would I know of whether or not? Because I know we had said that the Thin Blood do live just like they're allowed in the city, but they're not like recognized, that kind of thing. Um, as well, I guess a part. Class. Yeah. Um, I guess, would I know if anyone has any interest in the Thin Blood? And of any reasons why we would want to keep one, or is it more of just like, oh, I recognize it's a thin blood, and I'm just like, ha ha ha, yeah, no, that's even more of a reason to kill him. Give me. So, a... oh, go ahead. Yeah, good call. Make make it a roll. Never mind. Yeah. I was just gonna give out information, but you're you're gonna... right. Make it a roll. <laughs> yeah. I'll say I'll say give me a wit streetwise, to, um, because you're not oh. recalling any knowledge. This is more just like a, have you heard? before mm -hmm. this point um, you know on the streets <laughs> if anybody was you know having an interest in thin bloods uh, happened to be a critical no so nope. close though um, okay I, know. I keep getting them so uh, close. I don't want to interrupt her thing but can I join that role as well uh, absolutely 
it does pertain to you as well, so we I We both run. realized it. Yeah. yeah. Streetwise, wits. With streetwise, yeah. Yeah, Kay, did you want to re-roll? I can't. <laughs> you want to re-roll that nine? <laughs> oh, I mean, I could. No, I'm not going to. I do have it to spare, but... Oh, look at you. Ooh. Look at you with your four hey. successes. Uh, six. Oh, right, that's a re-roll. Excuse me. Oh, shit, yeah, and you got crit. Six. I got a crit. Yeah, that is, that is six. Um, I, I totally spaced on your previous two. Um, so, yeah, um, all right, let's make a new person. Who's gonna have an interest in thin bloods? Uh, do, 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 do. I heard something drop. What dropped? Besides my sire. Yeah, that's the, that's the, um, not again. jukebox Great. again. All right, good old jukebox. <laughs> so let's see here. Uh, well, here, how about this? Her call was hacked by the jukebox. Let's let's do this. I'll, I'll make this a little collaborative since uh, this is your one quick goal. question. Mm -hmm. As well, um, this is just thin blood knowledge. I um, love your raised hand. <laughs> <laughs> I do it all the time, bro. She's so respectful. Um, do do would I know if um if thin bloods if they are staked do they die? Um. Ooh, um, give me a, another roll, because that is a really important question that I can't give you uh, with what you initially had, because it's a hyper-focused one. Give me yes. an intelligence academics. Um, and I do believe you... Would you justify having one of your bonuses in there? How could you justify it for me? Uh, Research. Yeah, I will allow it, but what's the reason you were researching Thin Bloods? Um, basically, I feel like with the knowledge that I was given on, um... Working with one? Yeah, like, on, um, Castilla, I think, I think he would have already sort of picked up on it, because, like, one of the things I like to, I want to, like, sort of like what I did with that one guy that we had ca caught on to. He's very much so an observer, so he likes catching on to things. Okay. Um, so he would have caught on to that, and then now he's trying to figure out just more about the Thin Bloods. All right, that's all I needed. I'll allow it. Let's yeah. hear. Let's, let's... Um, what do you say it was? Academics intelligence. Yep, academics intelligence, because this is your your encyclopedic knowledge of of that. Um, and I will pull out the book because I do believe there is a specific I answer. Can tell for this. You what oh it is. yeah, go ahead. Um, it is. Can I tell her with the three? Yeah, yeah, three is right. more than easy. Um, thin blood, thin bloods do not get paralyzed. Um, like normal, they take a significant amount of harm. Yeah, it will hurt them significantly um they Possibly will not be them. they will not they will not go into torpor or be paralyzed when staked uh, they are they are the unfortunates caught between humanity and kindred society so you will possibly kill them just a lot of bow fuck out yeah um okay with that role as well you'll <laughs> also know that uh they also tend to not be as resistant to damage as other kindred are as well so um with the three i'm just giving you a little extra damage so like if you ever get tired of callista's shit you could probably shoot her <laughs> and she'll die mm -hmm. yeah but okay. there's some things you need to be real careful about too yep um so yeah uh that's what you would know um so going back to this uh critical information gathering. We're going to do this a little collaboratively because I like that you've got some roles and we can put this information together. Would you like this person to be male or female? Female. 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 Okay. <laughs> We're going to make a vampire name. I'm going to pull a list of ten names. Alright. Ooh, that one's kind of cool. That one's also kind of Ooh, that one's also kind of cool. Oh, these are all cool. All right, tell us that. <laughs> these are all cool. Okay, um, so we've got a couple of name options here. Um, Sion Netchurch, or Sion, S-I-O-N, Netchurch. Yuki Chagall. Elizabeth Shadow. Misaki Petrova. I just like the implication of a, a Russo-Japanese... <laughs> 
uh, yeah. woman. That sounds, I like that one the most so far. Uh, Maya Fiori. Uh, those are the only good ones. Uh, let's do Russo Japanese. You like, you like yeah, Misaki I like that one so far. Petrova? Misaki Petrova. Okay. Misaki Petrova. I will make. How do you a... spell that? Oh, let me put that in chat for you. Misaki Petrova. All right. So, Misaki Petrova is a Ventru. Um, Misaki Petrova is a Ventru that has taken it upon herself to shelter, and shelter is in air quotes, um, the poor, unfortunate souls that become thin bloods. Um, they have turned thin blood alchemy into a profitable business. So basically, it is the way to describe it is um, they offer the thin bloods a place where they can be safe and under protection. And it, it's basically like the old time prostitution rackets where it's like, yeah, you'll have a place to sleep and eat, but you'll be paying rent. And the rent that you owe, you'll never be able to climb out of the debt that you accrue because no matter how much you bring in, there'll always be something else that's adding on to the charges that keep them under this uh, Ventrus uh, service. So... <laughs> Um, Misaki Petrova is basically a thin blood pimp, um, and she is using them. It's always to... the handling that gets you. The shipping's yeah. fine, but the handling. Yep, yep, that delivery that's the charge. Problem. Um, but yeah, so basically they, and they do, they do very much also pimp out these thin bloods for, um, kindred and even humans, um, who want to walk that line, um, you know, where they don't want to risk, uh, getting bitten by a full-blooded vampire if they're human, or if they want something that, you know, still kind of has a pulse, but they don't have to worry about breaching the masquerade with, you know, they'll... It's a little bit of that, and they also use the Thin Blood Alchemy to do things like make, um, enhanced narcotics. Oh god, that can just be my sire. <laughs> um... Can... Can Viper... Well, Is not can. Sire? Viper's gonna... Is it your sire? Might be. <laughs> Does she have two um, names? Oh. Viper's gonna gonna write on a sheet of paper and hand it over to Lucian and say, "Do you want to play by trying to figure out her powers?" Question mark. Thin bloods have she powers. <laughs> Sometimes. Uh, I'm going to, like, when I notice that, um, I'll just start talking so she and the others can hear. There's someone who might be interested in thin butts. Um. And I'll, I think I'll... I'll look to her again and just say, Rose, you're like me. Your blood isn't thick. We are second class citizens. Your unlife won't be easy if you choose to live it. I, I don't understand. What are you talking about? Princes? Second class? This is, this is America. I have rights. Not anymore, darling. Not anymore, you don't. Prince, Prince, not Prince. Um, Viper would go. Um, I think I'll turn around and, uh, and pull back, like, some of the shirts the brand, the burn, the brand can be seen. We don't get many rights. 
Um, I'm gonna go up to her and, like, kneel down in front of her, and I'm just like, look, I'm going to level with you. We're all vampires of one kind or another, but... I'll go, <clears throat> Kindred. Even our kind is subservient to, and I point to Maxwell, <laughs> their kind. You're under us. So, you're at the bottom of a very long food chain. Oh. Okay. Add to that the fact that you were brought into the world illegally because your sire is supposed to have sought the prince's permission before embracing someone. And uh, that puts you as the lowest of the low, pretty much. So, I feel like uh, Alista is going to have trouble finding you a place. You want to spend the rest of your existence unhappy? Miserable? I... I don't... I don't understand. I... You already <laughs> killed Fabian. What else is there? I mean, he broke the law. But... I, I didn't break the law. I didn't even know there was That's a law. why you're still alive. Um, so your existence is against the law. But why? I'll, I'll lean forward and just kind of like whisper to her. I'm a slave to him. I am also the lowest. It is not easy. We do what they say. And she, we obey them. She looks to you, Callista, and she she tries to take your hands but she remembers that she's handcuffed and she just kind of I'll silently mouths help me um can viper hand lucy in one of the notes and say and it says um killing her would be merciful i agree stand and go to who's the who's the strongest of the who's fighty who's the strongest of the fighties who's the strongest of the fighties you did see antonio rip a person's head off yeah but he <laughs> but was we also said that we'd let lucian play and, and you did messy. you did you did promise lucian could play um i'll walk I'll go over to her and say, can you make it quick and painless? Fine. Do this as a respect to me, please. Put away the whip. Pull out my dagger. Um, I will go, um, I'll, uh, I just go over and I give her a hug so she's not looking doesn't see it coming lucian how do you want to do this usually i like those words but not in this instance <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh the quickest would just be to gosh how do you kill a thin blood just, uh, just thin... cut her throat and drain her out but she doesn't have much power. you will be you will be pleasantly surprised to find that thin bloods die relatively <laughs> as easy as uh, humans do 
Cool. So if you wanted to just cut her throat, uh, yeah. she might gurgle for a moment, but she will. Uh, if you want to do, if you want to do it like fast, or you can like pierce the heart, like right between the ribs, or just sever the spine. That'll do it instantly. Um, can Viper like perk up a little bit? Oh, not can Viper will perk up a little bit and and call over to Lucy and be like, wait. Then he'd he pull out um, a little, like, capsule and a syringe and say, see if this works. And hand it over. What is this now? It's an anesthetic. Oh, dear God above. I just slice her off, throw it open. All right. I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> enough of this. Lucian, Lucian walks over and says, enough of this, and just pulls the girl's head back and just gives a quick across and there is just a look of surprise as her eyes go wide and it trickles out she quickly clutches and for the sake of brevity she f falls over and dies we won't need to go into too many details her throat is slit she dies she looks before she falls over i give her a kiss on the forehead you give her you give her just the faintest of kisses as the Vitae uh, leaves her and she falls over. She doesn't turn to ash as quickly as Fabian did. Um, one of the things that is important to note, the older you are, the quickly death catches up to you when you are given yep. the final release. And so her body stays for quite some time. Um, um. I will actually walk over and close her eyes and say a small prayer. Mm -hmm. Like, that wasn't her fault. Yeah. Like, exactly. this was the best way out for her, but, like, that totally was not her fault. And with that finished, Maxwell stands up and says, Well, I have to say I'm pleased. You didn't rush into things. You delivered precise and exact justice to those that were guilty. And you made sure that those who were innocent were given mercy, but not, but not, uh, shit, I just lost the word, um, but not allowed to transgress further. And he just gives three applauding claps and says, well done. I think you will all work well together. And we'll take a break here at our half hour mark. Yay. So uh. thank you, chat, for being very active and talkative. Um, we will <laughs> step away for 10 minutes. Uh, everybody get up, stretch, decompress from that traumatic experience. Also, I, I do know why it feels like it's much later than it is. It's because we started late. Um, so, uh, yeah. yeah, that's true. That is, uh, in, in fact, where it is. Also, I guess we can just kind of probe it right now. Um, do you guys want to wrap it up here since Ark is missing? This I'm is, having this could fun. Be, yeah, like, this could be just a basic intro to get you guys together, and we can jump into it next week with him here. Or we can take the break and keep going a little bit more. I'm I'm good either way. There I, is like, only I like, don't want him to miss anything, but at the same time, I'm having fun and Callista's like freaking the fuck out. Yeah, internally. we can we can still like, go oh for another God. hour, but I'm just putting that out there. Which way you guys want to go? I mean, we could do we could do like another like we could continue afterwards, unless someone has like something against that. Um, but just not go like past the night um mm -hmm. and just have it be more like RP maybe we do it. more just like character play yeah no yeah. that was the plan it, this was just yeah. going to be contained to the night yeah, instead of like getting into another storyline um just so you guys know what the plan is um after break it would be looking at what you guys do for the rest of the night and what your personal havens look like before you go to bed <laughs> so have that stuff in mind cool, cool. so that you're not on the spot when i ask you um but for now 10 minutes, uh, get up, stretch, grab some more blood, and uh, we'll be back shortly. All right.
Uh, I will be muted, so if you all mm -hmm. want to chat, you can still talk candidly because the mics are hot while we are away. Oh, cool. Real fast for for Diesel Shot. Um, I feel like Voipa is too like Australian. Um, Viper. Uh, no, Viper. Yeah, it's more like Viper. How I picture it. Um, <laughs> Voipa. Sorry, I'm just now reading the chat. But yes, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. I see you listening. <laughs>
I never muted myself. Dun 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 dun. Now I'm sad that you weren't saying a bunch of bad stuff in the background. You know, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I went downstairs, so. Could have been like talking dirty to your lady all this time, and we wouldn't have known. No. What you eating? Macaroon. Macaroons. <laughs> we had um, 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 what are those ones called? Milano cookies. Orange. Orange. Uh, orange is my favorite. So good. Yeah, chocolate and The raspberry ones. ones is the best. The raspberry ones are good. Raspberry ones are good. I still like orange though. My wife loves the mint ones. The Milano's? Milano's. It's the, the two little uh, cookies with the chocolate between them. Pepperidge Farm remembers. Pepperidge Farm remembers. Pepperidge Farm remembers. You buy some of these Milano cookies and Petrich's farm makes this whole thing blow up. <laughs> uh, well, it sounds like everybody's back, so we can come back right now. Once Kay blows her nose. Just putting her on blast. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't take down the... First image as we come back. No, I didn't take the screen down. So yeah, per perfect timing to, to change the stream. <laughs> right, we'll, we'll, we'll wait a second. You're good. Take your time. <laughs> <laughs> no rush. She keeps looking at us like I'm gonna turn the screen I'm off. <laughs> right. I mean, I don't care if you do. She's like, don't you do it! I was more so looking it. at myself to see how I look. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello everyone, we're back. I was half hoping <laughs> Ark would have been home by now, but I guess not. Sad. That's fine. Much sad. Alright. <clears throat> so we find ourselves coming back. To the scene in this back store room. Um, some time has passed, and for the sake of brevity, her body as well starts to decay um, and turn to ash. And before long, there's just two sad piles uh, right there. And it doesn't take long. There's a couple of brooms for you guys to just sweep them down into the drains to be forgotten. Um, and Maxwell empties his uh, glass and sets it on a box and had congratulated you all for uh, your very thorough work uh, complimenting you all for not rushing directly into it finding solutions um, and dealing out appropriate punishments um, where they were needed with that he just says well business is done so, the rest of the night is yours. Unless you have anything for me. And a sheet of paper. He <laughs> takes the sheet of paper and he unfolds it. Any critiques, question mark? Well. <clears throat> no. Actually. I was rather impressed by your abilities to discuss with one another. Reach a solution and also frankly not hesitate to do what needed to be done I commend Callista for reaching a compromise with you all realizing that this thin blood did not need to be given final death but also understanding that perhaps the alternative wasn't the best choice Everything is a matter of circumstance when it comes to how you deal with one another. The tenants of the Camarilla will still need to always be ironclad. As long as you work within the tenants, I do not have any criticism of how you go about reaching your decision as long as a decision is made. I think Callista's probably because knowing what she is and and having her I think particularly I don't remember who said it. I think it was uh, I think it was Antonio. Um, but I think she's just like quiet standing back doing the whole keep your head down thing but uh but i think 
appreciate you guys on the audience as. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Of course. As I said, the night is yours. You all are free to mingle with the cattle. Just stay out of trouble. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. I mean, there's not much you wouldn't do. <laughs> he just kind of smirks. Well, um, uh, gentlemen, if you'd like to enjoy my club. Uh, You'll need to speak up. Well, uh, gentlemen, if you'd like to enjoy my club, then, um, my home is open to you. Yes, let us go back out front. I know you're not happy with everything as it, as it is, Callista, but I want you to know that it was the right decision. I know. It is definitely better for her to have it be done than have it tortured over many, many years. Antonio, was it? Yes. understand my position very well. I understand what hers would have been. You were right. There's a certain kind of person that can live this life and she was not it. I can't drink necessarily, but uh, I'm fine with staying for a little while. I don't know that uh, some of us got uh, enjoyment they were looking for, and I, I, I look at Lucian. <laughs> but uh, I, I am content for now, so I will stay. Bertha would hold up a sheet of paper that says, I'm going back to the booth. Of course. And I'll lead them back out. And, like, Paul, uh, Maxwell, were you intending to stay, or are you leaving? I am your shadow. Of course. I will lead them back out. You said you all were not interested in anything to drink. It's not so much that I am not interested, it's just that I can't. <laughs> How do you mean? It's not as easy for us as it is for you. It is, uh... an effort to actually imbibe liquid. Keeping it down is harder for normal kindred. As a Great. number of other things, I am told. Keeping it down, keeping it up. It's <laughs> all a matter of love. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm such a child. I didn't mean to laugh. <laughs> we all did. <laughs> yeah, Viper would just head back to the booth. I imagine we're all there now. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. We would just go back to where we were at the beginning. Uh, 
you all head back to the booth and settle in comfortably. The music is still uh, keeping a nice entertaining beat. People move about uh, gathering drinks, talking to one another, but they don't seem to be paying much mind to any of you unless you go out of your way to draw their attention. Nope. I keep to myself. So, Viper, is there a reason you don't speak much? Just writes on paper, yes. <laughs> he'd, uh, he'd shrug, say. Not usually a reason. You waste a lot of paper that way, don't you? <laughs> Take that, trees! <laughs> um, he'd say, I work at the zoo, we use it for bedding. Make some stuff. Wait, you're telling me you use all your notes that you make for bedding? Not all. For most of them, yes. So you sleep on a pile. I fully imagine in a year or two, we're going to find out that Viper can talk just fine and is doing this just to be, I don't know, weird. Just to spite you. Did he say that out loud? <laughs> oh, totally. He's talking the whole time. This is him talking right now. He's oh, you're talking. actually speaking. I, I wasn't sure if you were still writing and just saying <laughs> no, what you were writing. No, he's I'm sorry. Talking right now. He, okay. He, he. If if people were paying attention, which I assume they would be now, um, it's certain he doesn't. Usually, if things are just to single singular people or things that are easy for him to just jot down. He'd much rather jot something down and hand it to someone than say it. But if he's addressing a whole group of people or like just talking about something, especially if it has something to do with his work, then he will speak. I see. <laughs> yes. Um, it's just very much so the stereotypical like stoic kind of like, I don't need to speak. <laughs> so I'm not going to. Um, but yeah, right now he, he is. He's he's talking about his little snake. So, so you're going the Skyrim uh, assassin route is what you're saying. Nope. <laughs> um, but yeah, he'd say um, he'd say basically we use it for, for betting. For the snakes in his little lab. Basically what he said. I'm just picturing all these notes that these snakes are going over and saying various things. The snakes he obviously the puts them in a shredder before like he'll shred it and then like put it in. <laughs> Makes sense. And it's only for his lab. Obviously, if like, cause if he and he'll say something if like if they're if he thinks he's gonna break the masquerade by writing it down, he'll say it. But yeah. Uh, so, so have... Callista, do you own the bar? On the surface, I own this place. Um, my sire. Is one in charge. I see. Who are those people that you were with? I heard. So basically spare blood? Spare. Um, I wouldn't say spare. helpful to keep them close. You have to understand that Antonio is new. You'll have to use plain words with him until he picks up on it. They're her personal feeding cattle, Antonio. <laughs> she keeps them around 
and entertained, and she doesn't have to worry about dangerous things like going out and hunting. Right, so spare blood. Yes. Very similar to what I do. No, not quite the same as a camel pack full of refrigerated blood. I mean, she just has to talk to her meal. It's true, but talking comes easy to me. It doesn't come with a shelf life five. Ah. Do you work where you get your blood, then? Oh, bags. From where? The hospital? Uh, do you have someone that... Uh, it all depends. It's not generally just one location. If you go to one spot too much, it gets suspicious. A place to stay? Yeah. Yes. Yes, I am. I have uh, quite the nice place to stay. I happened to be pretty well off before all this happened. What about you, Lucian? Mm -hmm. Do you have your own place as well? Oh, yeah. I have my little piece of heaven, you could say. Is that so? Where's that at? In the city. That narrows it down. <laughs> I mean, I don't think anybody wants to give you their address. <laughs> I think you can go. Well, it would be helpful knowing where my coterie stays, but um, of course, if you wish to keep it, that's your business. Well, we should set up a coterie location to be sure, but it is safer if no one knows where anyone sleeps. Again, trust is at the premium. <laughs> I'm close to the zoo. Shh. Not far from here, then. I got that from the snake race. <laughs> <laughs> he just, he would repeat it. <laughs> <laughs> He's not saying exactly where it is, but for if if they're trying to figure out a place that is close for everyone, he is saying he is near the zoo. Also, um, he would slide um um what do you call it? Antonio a piece of paper. And just written on it is just this the six traditions in layman's terms. Uh, he'll pick it up and actually take a look at it, and he'll be like, "Thank you." I knew basically this from Maxwell, but I didn't know what it was called, so I appreciate it. Rebecca would nod. Uh, and he'll actually fold it up, and put it in his pocket. Um, so other than a common meeting place, which I can have set up for us, I also think we should have some way to easily communicate. Um, no, electronics are frowned upon, and I, I, I look over at Maxwell, but I feel like we can speak in plain English as long as we don't say anything overt. So, short of keeping actual cell phones on us, I think we should have some kind of email site that we could all go to and access. That way we can have a 
a way to meet up and gather. What, no carrier pigeons? <laughs> no, we can do a regular email as long as we just say <laughs> we're meeting here or, you know, don't say, hey, I'm going to go out and eat the humans. Would you like to join me? <laughs> Discretion is the key. If you are going to speak Just avoid leaving a trail. I don't keep a cell phone on me for obvious reasons because it's too easy to track. But I do keep a computer for you, reasons like this because communication is a must these days. If you need to use a cell phone, just be sure to destroy the sun cards. True. You have to be careful, burner. though, because they all have some kind of tracking. What do you say? If you're insistent on it, burner phones are the way to go. Just be careful, because they can all be triangulated, and they all have GPS these days. The reason you have a burner is because it's a use and smash. That's why I like email. Destroyed. You just access the server through a VPN and you'll be fine. And again, as long as you're not being blatant with your language, it shouldn't be a problem. If we need to, the other member of our coterie knows stuff about technology. That's good. I know some about technology, but I know much more about weapons. I do too, just more on the research side. That is also good too, because I know nothing about the research side. So I can talk and you can fight. I'm not a big talker. What about you, Lucian? What about me? You seem like a... potential fighter. Where do your talents lie? In the social vein, in the physical vein, or in the uh, <laughs> mental vein? You get right to it, do you not? I mean, we need to know each other's powers in a sense, at least so far as it benefits us in potential situation. I could hold my own in a fight. I... Keep myself alive in the streets. Know way, my way around them pretty good. Sometimes I talk to people, get them to see things my way, one way or another. Hmm. Do any of you do I just like to know who I need to cover and who I don't. I'm sorry, but you won't be able to um, count much on me in a physical confrontation. Unless it's dancing. If we ever have a dance-off, that could be useful. Perfect. You can be the distraction. <laughs> Excellent. Congratulations, you've been upgraded to bait. <laughs> I think a viper would write on a sheet of paper. It says... No, I think I'll actually say it. He'll say... I can turn into a snake. Now that's now that is actually very useful. I was gonna surprise you. <laughs> Do I need to watch your back in combat or no? You said earlier mm -hmm. you were an academic. I do a little bit of everything, but yes, mostly. <laughs> academic. As you okay. put it. 
I do mostly observing. Paul knows to look out for you and Callista, though. Hmm. Well, average. Do it if you dance. Perfect. I mean, I don't not dance. <laughs> Sure, why not? It's been quite a long time since I've danced. And I'll stand up and I'll move to the dance floor. How much effort are you putting into dancing, Antonio? Are you giving it your all? Um, I'm just going to let her... I mean, like, I'm not putting in supernatural effort, but... <laughs> well then, please, both of you, if I could have... Whichever you feel is more appropriate to how you want to dance. Either dexterity or charisma plus performance. Are they with uh, Instead of performance, can I do punch dancing and do brawl? No, you are not <laughs> punch dancing. <laughs> uh, important question. Does, uh, does the stunning merit give me the plus two dice for being pretty? Do you feel it's appropriate for this? Uh, if you're trying to be a spectacle, I could say yes, argue. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm asking, like, do you feel that it is what you want? Sure, that's kind of my thing anyway. Okay, then yes. Uh, I would say go ahead and put it in. Um, and just, you are, you are trying to show off and gain attention from Yeah, if you're trying you. to stand out, mm -hmm. that's what it would work. Um, wow. A few questions. Okay. <laughs> oh. Well, few damn. Questions. So, that is damn. bestial critical. About that dance off. <laughs> that is um, my thing. Real fast. Okay. Are they. This is um, being observing. Are they within eyesight? How far into the dance floor do the two of you go? I mean, this is her deal, so I would allow her to leave me. I don't know where she's going. I this is her should, club. I suppose so. I should also ask, Antonio, did you want to spend any willpower to try and dance better? It's almost the end of the night. You could burn some. Oh no. Okay. Nah, a two is fine. I'm not. I'm not a like dancer. I'm. A two is enough that like I'm not tripping over my own two feet, right? So yeah, I'm like, no, yeah. um, I think. I think as I'm, I'm never dancing, gonna keep up with her, but I think as I'm dancing though um i do like reach out and like pull them close and i just say be sure to rouse your blood <laughs> or she'll rouse it for you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but just things that viper would be keeping an eye out for if they are with their nice sight is um who seems to be taking the lead how the other reacts when they try and take the lead who, antonio do you rouse the blood that kind of thing uh, yeah, probably. Why not? I will need a uh, rouse check from you. You said it's getting close to the end of the night. Yep. Yeah, you can, you can afford it. Um, you do get a little hungrier, so just mark um, down on your hunger dice. You'll just put in that second dot. Got it? Great. Um, so just know that now if you ever roll one of the dice from your main pool, it goes into the hunger, so there's higher chances of uh, hunger successes. Messy criticals and messy failures. Yep. <laughs> For more fun things to happen, like uh, what's going to happen to Shay, mm -hmm. because she has a uh, a bestial critical there. Um, so the way that this is going to work, or at least the way I feel that it should work, um, she takes the lead. And however Shay wants to describe uh, this dancing goes, um, all eyes are on the two of you. Um as the two of you dance, the crowd kind of parts, gives way. Uh, the crew, knowing who uh, Callista is, puts a light on the two of you, and she is captivating everyone. It is drawing a lot of attention, and everybody is aware of what you two are doing. But uh, go ahead and describe your dance for us. Um, 
I'm probably moving to to probably music that's very similar uh, to this, and I think with like the face paint that like glows in the dark, there's a lot of like stuttering motions every time like light goes on and off of her. Um, but I think she she just while it like looks like it's stuttering just from any of, any of the flashing lights, um, she's just moving uh, moving fluidly. Um, spinning very, very, uh, very like alluring, like it's like it comes naturally, uh, but she's completely in her element and she doesn't move too far from Antonio. Um, very, like, barely, very clearly leading him and, um, uh, uh, just, just being very sexy. Yeah, because she's clearly the better dancer, like, Antonio just basically, like, tries to hold his own and, like, move with her, um, insofar as his ability allows him to. And, you know, as far as he can, get, like, kind of an assist from her, I guess. Mm -hmm. And with the way she's dancing and because of this bestial critical... Um, the two of you are right up against each other. Callista's beast, while it is not a full-on monster like many of you, it still has to reside behind the cage. Um, and it is rattling. It seeks the physical contact. It seeks the passion. And the two of you... It's one of those moments where the folks watching might th think if they were more conservative that more than dancing might be going on with how aggressively she is up against Antonio. But it's enough that when the music stops, everybody kind of claps and seems enraptured by it. And the crowd is all around the two of you. They are offering to buy you drinks, insisting on another chance to dance, and Antonio, before long, you find yourself kind of being shunted out of the dance floor. Oh, he, he would leave long before that unless yeah. she's coming with him. Like No, no. Like, they've, as they've, being... they've collapsed onto her. Um, <laughs> you're, you're making your way out, and they're more than happy to help make sure you're out of the way as quickly as possible. That is totally fine with me. Yep. As as he's leaving, she seemed saying, to need a a way to blow off steam after the back room. So oh, yeah, Antonio absolutely. was like, "That's totally fine with me." Mm -hmm. um, but I, as he's leaving, I just say, "Welcome to Orpheum." I give him a wink. And <laughs> that is where I feel Callista is gone for the rest of the night. Um, she's drawn in enough attention that she can have the pick of the litter, as it were, for the evening. Um, but as we retire to Callista's haven, why don't you describe what it looks like for us and the way your evening closes out? Um, it is ridiculously clean, um, looks relatively modern. Um, there is, uh, there's... Um, there's some, some, like, tasteful nude artwork of herself. Of course. Photographs. Um, and there is, uh, there are several sculptures, um, just like on shelves, um, of, of different things. Um, a lot of them are just designs and little potteries, um, and, uh, and occasionally there's like a figure that's that's shaped into some sort of uh, some sort of fantastical creature of some kind. Um, not super detailed, but stylized. Uh, she has a uh, um, she has a large bed um, with the with the with the drapes canopy bed. And then just absurdly clean. Uh -huh. 
anything else you want to notate for the way your evening closes out? Um, no, my beast wants wants. <laughs> My beast wants physical contact, so I, I take someone to bed with me. Alrighty. And that's where Callista's night ends. Um, when it becomes obvious that Callista's night has wound down, do the three of you linger any longer in the club? No, not really. After my dance, I probably like finish up and get ready and head back to my haven. Maxwell offers to drive anyone home who wants it. I'm good. I'll take the offer. Okay. Uh, Antonio, I say I, I'm insists. fine. Antonio, of course he insists. <laughs> yeah. Of course um, he does. So why don't we have Lucian break off and tell us what their haven looks like and how their evening concludes. Lucian lives in the basement of an abandoned warehouse, basically. Just a big empty old space, concrete blocks, not very clean. He has mattress on the floor, but a lot of blankets and pillows, so it's like a little nest right there. And Nearby are a couple of bookcases, just jam-packed with books of all kinds. And notebooks and papers are scattered all about on the floor. And on the top of one of the bookcases is a, a jar. Good-sized jar that has sand and what appears to be water in it. That's just right on top of the bookcase and that's it plain and simple all right viper um you sit in the car with antonio and maxwell maxwell's um driver uh, agrees to take you anywhere you want to go to get home and you give the directions uh that I assume leads to a back entrance of the Phoenix Zoo. Do you want to get? Yep. Do you want them to get close, or do you designate a spot to be dropped off and walk the rest of the way? Um, I think he would. Yeah, designate a spot. And so it's not long before the vehicle stops. Um, the proximity of the zoo is not lost on Maxwell, being the coterie's shadow. He does, in fact, know where everybody lives, uh, so he's not too worried about it, but he doesn't raise attention to it to Antonio. Um, the driver opens the door for you and says, your spot, Mr. Viper. I would nod and leave. And so, once you've arrived uh, at your haven within the zoo, what does it look like for us, and how does Viper conclude their evening? So basically, when you enter, it literally just looks like a laboratory. There's a little like storage room place in the back, but when you first enter, there's like a little, a little area that has a desk with some, um, and it's a well put together laboratory. It's not like, you know, strewn about. It's like the clean like chrome and white walls and like there's like a metal desk in the corner that has ni nicely put um, books and everything and notebooks with a um, computer on it it doesn't seem like it's vipers though um, he just sort of walks past it and there's one wall um, sort of filled with books but then and then there's like a little not like operating table but like table in the center then you go a little bit back and there's another hallway it's about the same size as the room but it gets a tiny bit smaller um mostly just because the walls on both sides are lined with um what's it called uh terrariums snake terrariums 
Um, and the only really light in the whole haven is the light going into the terrarium. It's like almost a bluish light, giving it a weird ambiance. And then each one of them filled with snakes with his little bedding in it as well, on a part of it. Um, then you go in through this like big door. There's the back area, which is basically where he, where he sleeps. Okay. And lastly, the vehicle drives to Antonio's estate, his haven. Why don't you describe for us what it all looks like and how Antonio's evening concludes. Also, the Nat 30s uh, rating us with 11 people. Hello. Thank oh, you guys wow. for stopping by. Hello. The timing Hello. is impeccable, but we still appreciate and love you all. Hey, now we have to go on for another hour. No. <laughs> 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 um, so... For those of you in the group, I actually have pictures of his haven posted in the VTM chat. Um, but it is uh, probably the most expensive home in Scottsdale. Um, it is enormous. Uh, he has an infinity pool. It is a fully modern mansion. Um, there are guard houses, security. Um, his uh, retainer Hugo uh, greets him at the door. Um, he goes downstairs into his uh, basement, and there is actually a false wall down there uh, that leads further down into the complex itself, um, where he has all his weapon storage. Um, so he cleans off the garage and uh, takes out the other few weapons that he had hidden on his person. Um, and takes his house gun that he carries around with him um, and makes ready to bed down for the evening. Uh, he will cast a ritual and uh, drink some blood, and then he will go off to rest in a luxury bed. What ritual do you cast? Just curious. Uh, Wakes with evening's freshness, which I am changing from um, the one that's listed on my sheet. I decided I'm that would probably not be fully better. versed in as cool, but that is the one that uh, keeps you from uh, not being woken up if something bad happens. Correct? Yeah. Yes. There's, basically, there's... basically, if I'm awakened during the day, it allows me to wake up with all my vampiric powers, even though it's daytime. Mm -hmm. Yes. Excellent. Well. Um, again, thank you everybody who stopped in for the raid. Your timing couldn't have been better because this is unfortunately where we are wrapping up for the evening. Um, got to hear about my amazing mansion, though. You so got to fun. hear about one of our amazing, <laughs> amazing uh, havens. Um, so Just like we, mine. <laughs> why don't we pad this runtime out just a little bit longer and we'll go through, um, again, each of you who you're playing and where uh, these wonderful people can find you uh, next time you're playing a game. So why don't we start same direction. We'll go with our resident Tremere, Antonio. Hello everybody, you can find me here on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I will be playing uh, Antonio, the uh, 13th generation Tremere. Uh, he is basically Batman. Um, so I will be doing that on Tuesdays, and then on Thursdays I am back here, uh, playing Scum and Villainy, which is an amazing game run by our Space Mistress Kelsa, and we always have a good time, so come back for that. And it will. And that's me. Drop it down to Cadence. Hello, I am Cadence. I am Magdalene Bloom on Twitter. I am playing through Encounter Roleplay, Defiant, and days have no meaning to me. So is it Friday, I think it is? Yeah, I think that I was on Fridays, yes. Yeah, I. today is my second Saturday of the week. So anyway, yeah, and I played Lucian, a very calm, happy, not murderous at all, Malkavian. 
that was fun. Watching. I'm convinced. Watching all of the props slowly pop up on screen was. Oh, oh that was fantastic. So many. <laughs> we'll, fan. Oh, a fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you were, you were, you were, you had the 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 whip out, and I was just like, rope. <laughs> That's for a different costume. Um, but yeah, we'll jump it over uh, to Kay. Kay, who are you? Where can they find you? And who are you playing tonight? Hey, hey, it's Kay once again. Um, I am also known. You might hear me be called Casey sometimes. That's usually by people that are outside of in my house. Um. <laughs> I also go by kcl.cause on Instagram. Um, that's usually where you can find me. I just recently started posting more often um, with like my new aesthetic and everything. I'll be posting some characters as well from this show. I have um, actually a Josie post lined up. Literally just pictures I sent you guys like last time I cosplayed. Um, but I don't know when that's gonna be posted, but whenever I feel like it. Um, I play Viper, I didn't realize that I forgot to mention that he looks to be about like 20, 22 years old, um, about like how people college aged, you know, me, um, <laughs> type person, um, and yeah, he's a snake boy gangrel, um, who likes writing notes instead of talking, um, and that's, that's, I think really it um the only other place you can find me but you can't even really find me right now <laughs> is um i do i have joined or i've been in um what is it called? the tales of Swordfall podcast um however there's been a long long hiatus in terms of posting which i mean is cool he's going through his own stuff um so i will probably not be in there for a long long time but we play every Saturday, so we are making content for it. Um, other than that, that's all. Jumping over to Shay. Hello, everyone. I'm Shay. Uh, you can catch me here most days of the week. I'm a member of Party Wipe Gaming. Um, uh, from Vampire the Masquerade to Dragon Heist to Scummy Villainy. All very fun. Um, I am also an artist. I have my own channel, which is twitch.tv slash shagem, S-H-A-E-G-E-M, um, where I, I stream my art and chat with folks. I usually stream on Twitch, unless I'm doing something that Twitch does not allow, in which case I just stream to, to close friends. Um, otherwise, uh, you, can, you can see some of my... my uh, stuff posted on my Twitter, which is at Jemshe, is dyslexic, G-E-M-S-H-A-E. Uh, and I am open for commissions, so if anyone wants character art done, logo design, map design, little cute chibi emotes, I have so much fun doing those, uh, uh, feel free to send me a message and I will get back to you. Uh, otherwise, I am playing Kalista Tiranos, Tiranos, uh, the then blood, who is super scared of everyone being at the bottom of the food, food chain here so not at the bottom you're just slightly above the bottom humans are still at the bottom. the bottom yeah slightly above the bottom uh every every everyone is bigger and scarier and and Callista. Callista just talks hey 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 that's me this would be where we put our fifth person, but uh, they unfortunately, or very fortunately, started a new job today. So they were off at orientation being an adult, and adulting is important. So uh, next week you will see them come in as Olivia Wright. We will get to meet our Nosferatu, but there's their wonderful artwork. Um, so you can enjoy that for the time being. Look at how adorable that horrible little gremlin is. Um, mm -hmm. I have been the Dungeon Master, Storyteller, whatever you want to call it for this game, Keeper, etc. so forth. I am Rindus of Party Wipe Games. Thank you for stopping by the channel. Thank you again to the Nat 30s for coming in at a raid. Unfortunately, it was at the end of our stream, but we still love you guys nonetheless. There's the hearts. Um, you can check us out again. No, not tomorrow. You won't catch us tomorrow, but you will catch Reese. And Shay and I back here on Thursday for, as mentioned, Scum and Villainy, 
uh, the show called Rocksteady, where we play bounty hunters uh, who do fun bounty hunter things. Uh, I'm a cat. Shay is a cat. Reese and I are war buddies who ended up bounty hunting together, and we have other uh, wonderful people and a gremlin on our side. The gremlin is probably still in chat if he hasn't gone to bed already. Um, <laughs> tomorrow, you can catch me over on Encounter Roleplay, where we also do a lot of stuff over there. Uh, I will be playing in iHunt, where I play uh, Ashton Dixon, a fun inventor who has a drone with a knife attached to it, which they have named Stabby McStabberton, uh, per popular vote. Hey, Outro's still here. Hey, there's, there's our gremlin. Um... Friday, big shout out to Diesel Shot, who is also in the chat watching our game. Shay and I will be over on their channel playing a, a fun game of their own design uh, that we are looking forward to. I will be playing a fun scientist uh, that I like bringing up whenever there is an opportunity to do fun science things in sci-fi, so expect uh, some cosplay there too. Um, coming up soon, Shay will have her Waterdeep Dragon Heist game on this channel. That is Saturdays. Sundays, we play Deadlands Reloaded. Mondays, we haven't had a chance to play it in a while because of various reasons, including Ark having a job and me having constant back pain this last week. Uh, Tuesdays, of course, is where we're here. Uh, Tuesdays, I also play Akhtung Cthulhu, where I play a Demolition Man Russian, and it was fun getting uh, my shit kicked in by the Nazis. Yeah, fun time. 2020 mood. Um, <laughs> Coming up soon on, what day is that shit? I know, I should know this. Ah, also coming soon on Wednesdays. Uh, might, might be tomorrow, but might start next week. I will also be in a new game called Shinobi Gami. Uh, it is a two-shot ninja uh, adventure where I already have uh, my costume delivered for the most part. I'm still missing my coat, but all of my ninja stuff is there. It if is you are, super anime. If you are, <laughs> it is super anime. If you are uh, in our Discord, uh, I do have the basics posted of our outfit. I have a wonderful wig, uh, a kitsune mask, and uh, some stuff to cover up my beard. Um, and they will become a bondage ninja, which will be great. Hey, Spider Queen Long, thank you for the follow. Um, I'm going to wrap this up because it's running long, speaking of. Uh, so let's find somebody to raid. Is anybody currently on that we can give some love to? Twitch, 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 Twitch. If you guys have any suggestions, feel free to call them out. But let's find somebody to send all these wonderful people uh, to. Most of the people I have are offline currently. Yeah, everybody's offline that I know. So, I only know like two people, so. And one of them is us. Um, yep. We'll go over to. Oh, no, Colt just ended. What is time to tabletop doing? I was like, I have two friends that I could send us over to, but they're playing. Apex, so it's like I don't think the tabletop people will appreciate being sent to that. Um, we're gonna go over to Time to Tabletop. They are playing Kids on Bikes, which is a fun game. That is Saving Throw Show going? Um, I'll keep that in mind for next time. I, I've already queued this one up, um, but they're playing Kids on Bikes, so check them out. Give them some love. Uh, say hi to them. Stick around. Enjoy it. And again, thank you for the raids, the follows, the bits. You are all fabulous, and we love you, and we will see you again soon. Have a great night.